Check the size of that one out. Oh, <laughs> holy crap. This is what I came for right here, man. This is what I came for right here. Oh, oh my gosh. You've got to be kidding me. Ow. Six ten. All right, guys. So I get a lot of questions. People are like, "Man, what are you doing to catch these fish? Are you going reaction? Are you are you dragging? Are you going slow? Are you doing a drop shot?" And basically, there's lots of different ways to catch these fish. The biggest key is finding out the ambush spots and how you're going to approach the spot. So on a a reservoir like this, current comes into play, conditions like wind come into play, and I spend a lot of time graphing. It's not just on lakes back home, you know, regardless of where I'm traveling, I'm gonna I'm gonna spend a lot of time in the graph. That's your that's your eyes underneath the water. So this bank looks pretty good. I like that it's more of a 45. It's got some chunk rock but it also has a mix of mud and sand. So, you know, I really like banks like this because it kind of offers everything. The issue with this is that, you know, if you're not seeing bait fish and you're not seeing other forms of life, chances are it's probably not gonna hold many big fish. It, you might get those one to two pound fish. And, you know, if there's any doubt in your mind, obviously you're gonna stop and fish this, right? Like if it looks really good to you. I did see a school of bait fish back here I'm gonna go to my down uh, down scan or my 2D sonar. I'm gonna mark them. And then obviously I'm trusting my graph for those bait fish. So I'm gonna turn around and hit that spot. I think what a lot of people don't understand is that you know your sonar certainly makes these bait fish move. You go over it, they hear it, they feel it. And a lot of times that can actually change the way that those fish are sitting. So um, just because you see them on your graph, you mark them, you turn around, doesn't mean they're gonna necessarily sit there. On this particular body of water, I've noticed that they move a lot. You know, and that's that's something else I wanna really kinda address because I kinda fell into that trap. You know, I fell into that trap of, well, hey, I should catch them here in winter and I can catch them year after year after year. And you know what, that's proven not true. And I think a lot of people tend to fall into that trap of, well, this pattern should work. They should be doing this. They, you know what? Fish don't care. Fish don't catch feelings. Fish don't care. All they have to do is survive. So if that's eating or if that's, you know, taking, uh, you know, taking cover around stumps in a place like this or whatever, all they have to do is survive. We make up stories. We make up lots of things in our head about what we should do to catch bass. And don't get me wrong, I do the same thing, but in winter time, you really have to get back to the basics, which is you have graphs on your boat, so use them. You have, you know, a mix of finesse and swim baits and reaction baits, use them all. Um, get back to the basics. Try not to let, you know, preconceived notions run, run your day. It's not easy to spend time in the driver's seat on a lake like this knowing that there's state records in here so it's really hard to sit on your graph because you want to be fishing the only way you can catch a state record is if you're fishing for them right but there's so much water and there's so much opportunity that it's overwhelming and so that's what i'm talking about getting back to the basics it's just it's spending time with your graph and it doesn't matter what company you use it's just spending time with and understanding what you're looking at. I've spent a lot of time on these Lorances. It would, it would be hard for me to change manufacturers at this point because I am so used to, you know, my understanding and expectations of these graphs. Um, not that the other ones aren't great, man. I love the look of Garmin, you know, Pan Optics looks amazing. Um, you know, Humminbird's got some great imaging as well. And so I, I think the cool thing is, is no matter what you have right now, you can put that to use. You can make that work for you. Um, because I really look at graphs like an investment. And, and what I mean by that is, 
some people save their money in a bank account. Let's just say a savings account. Other people invest it. Other people, you know, either they do it themselves or they might have an investor or they might use a, you know, a particular company. That money is working for them. You know, you have to make your graphs work for you. If, if they're just sitting on the boat and they're just sitting there and you don't ever use them, but you know, besides water, temp, and depth, and you've got, you know, structure scan or you've got side imaging, you've got down imaging, maybe you've got, you know, all these fancy new stuff that I don't have, pan optics, you know, Hummerbird 360. If you have those features and you're not using them, you're doing yourself a disservice, absolutely. All right, so that bait, that bait school is gone. I, I literally marked it, I turned around to fish it. You know, I got to talking with you guys and, and it's not there. So, you know, it's, it's here today, gone the next minute type of world. Um, I've really thought about this over and over and over and, and here's what it comes down to. I almost have to reassure myself all the time that this is true. These fish in impoundments like this, where a lot of the fish are nomadic, you know, kokanee, they do not stop moving, period. You think it's, th it's cold, that it's, you know, mid thirties to upper thirties and that these fish don't do anything. There's one. I don't know what that is. It does not feel like a small mouth. These fish do not stop moving. I don't know what this is. It's gotta be a trout. No, it's small now. Little guy. Gosh, he's heavy. It's amazing how heavy these fish are. Stop. Okay, dude. You wanna stop for a second? And just fell right out. Now that's gonna be my last spot before I take off. Um, you know, I just wanted to cover a couple other things. Uh, you know, since I did explain being confident in your graphs and trusting what's on the screen, you know, the other part to that is understanding your cone angles. Um, you know, especially with 2D sonar, you may not see things underneath the boat. You know what I'm saying? It's the fish might not necessarily be right under you. So having some, you know, having some casts around the boat too, not just underneath of you would be a really, really good idea. That's a big fish. This is a big fish. Oh my gosh. This is a giant. I don't know how big this fish is. Is this? I literally don't know what this is. <laughs> I don't know what this is. There's no way this is a smallmouth. Gotta love how these fish are built. <laughs> 